Business Development Executive for Communicare 247. And today I'm joined with Julie Eshelman of Leonard Cheshire so that we can discuss the role and the benefits of technology with supporting people that have disabilities. So Julie, just before we begin our conversation, could you tell us a bit about your role within the world of care? Sure, yes. So I've, I've worked with people with uh, disabilities for about 20 years now. Uh, most of it uh, in the early years was in education settings. I was an autism teacher and a behavior specialist and um, a staff trainer. Uh, and while I was at uni, I was a respite worker in, in care uh, in the United States. Uh, and since I've been here, I've been working in um, a disability charity, uh, primarily in a project management role uh, in assistive technology, trying to uh, oversee testing of different pilots of technology to see uh, if we can find new cool ways to make people's um, jobs easier and better and more enjoyable for care workers uh, and uh, the services that people who are in care receive better uh, and more uh, have a positive impact on their lives. So more of a project management mo role recently. Yeah, no, absolutely. That that sounds, wow, <laughs> a 20 year career, so to speak. So <laughs> if you don't mind them, what types of technologies have you and your organization explored in the past? Sure. So we, we're looking at technologies kind of at two different levels, kind of uh, in the same streams that I just mentioned, uh, that we want technologies that can make um, people who are providing care services make their jobs a little bit easier, a little bit more enjoyable, maybe automate some of the um, less, uh, less enjoyable or mundane data kinds of tasks uh, to free them up to have more social engagement and higher quality interactions uh, yeah. in, in their support roles. Uh, so we look for technology that can help us do that well. Uh, and then we're also looking for um, assistive technology, which can be used to empower people and give them a little bit more uh, equality of choice uh, with people who uh, have a little bit more uh, freedom around using their own finances to obtain kit. Uh, so making it a little bit more so that people who are living in care uh, understand what kinds of technologies are available to them uh, yes. and help find some that might be solutions to challenges that they have in their lived environment or, or with the kind building the kinds of lives that they'd like to build. Absolutely. So it provides a bit of choice around what types of technology is out there and what might be suitable for the individual in question and how, how, how can their lives be made easier, more independent. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. And with technology, of course, comes data. You, you just mentioned that word data there. So in terms of the technology that you have experience in using, do they tend to report to platforms? Or are they working in silos or can you shed any light around that? So we're, we're just in the early stages of transitioning to a more tech, tech savvy organization. Uh, most of the information that we collect uh, to date has still been very paper based uh, and across several hundred sites, you know, there aren't templates or forms or things like that. It, it's mostly just lined notebooks where people are writing notes, which means we don't have apples to compare to other apples across the organization because not everyone is taking information the same way. So a lot of our focus has been having a central system uh, and a kind of a centralized list of information that we want to make sure that we're capturing so that we can see a little bit more continuity of care and quality uh, across the organization. Yes. Uh, so we're in the very early stages of that, but we have built out uh, a back system uh, into which all of the different functions that we've identified will feed so that they all kind of feed into a central database of sorts. Yes. And do you have any um, thoughts around how data sharing can be improved? I mean, you mentioned there collating it, if you will, into the one, the one platform. How, could you share how that will be of more benefit, having it in a centralized location? Well, from the organizational perspective, I think that it gives us a better uh, opportunity to do a different kind of quality control, you know, especially now when we're having to find some pretty creative ways to, to, to keep, you know, the cars on the road uh, remotely, so to speak. Um, it gives us a real uh, advantage uh, from an organizational perspective to make sure that we're still able to monitor quality uh, and provide support 
uh, on sites that need more support uh, with with building up kind of the the, the care services that they're providing. Yes. Um, yeah, because of course it can help with interventions that perhaps may need to be made to, to make the outcomes more positive for the people that we're ultimately supporting. That's right. And I think that it also can pull together, you know, if we can take the right outcomes data and we can collect the right information, we can start to see what's working, uh, what's resulting in positive changes in some places so that we can scale those solutions out. Uh, yes. And we can also see what kinds of things might not be working quite as well or might not be worth uh, quite as big of an investment to scale out or that we need to be very precise with um, the kinds of customers that we scale that solution to. So all of that information just empowers us to make decisions that, that can improve our services and ultimately um, uh, make sure that the services that our customers are receiving are, are top notch. Yes, absolutely. And just with your kind of experience in this field, you know, do you feel there's anything currently missing from the world of technology that, you know, what, is there anything you would like to see from providers um, in terms of evolution? What, what are the next up and coming products? <sighs> You know, I'm a little bit less interested in what the next up and coming products are than I am in the process of marketing them. I think yeah. that uh, the disabled persons sector is still quite a forgotten market. And, and I think that we're now up to the point where two in 10 people have some manner of impairment or disability. And as everybody is living longer, you know, aging, uh, various forms of disablement are a very normal part of aging, uh, uh, whether they be temporary states or, or permanent. Uh, and so I think that this is, this is a huge market where we have kind of been left to be creative ourselves in finding how mainstream technologies can be used for pretty specialist solutions. I would be very interested to see technology companies engage a lot more with the disabled community so that they can start marketing their products for those uses, right? You kind of know the basic features of an iPhone because they show off in their commercials about cameras and, you know, the good camera quality and these good apps or things like that. So the mainstream kinds of technology features are always highlighted because it's always been presumed that that's the main part of the market and it still is, but, but there is a massive consumer base with resources available to them and they don't know how to use mainstream technology because it's not it's not shown how it can be used. So I would really like to see technology companies do a little bit of a better job um, marketing their products to the disabled community so that we're not um, kind of coming up with uh, around the back door solutions or, you know, kind of stitching together different pieces of kit to try to find something that would be a good solution to issues when the tech providers and the creators are acutely aware of all of the functionality of theirs. So if they, if they became acutely aware of some of the challenges people with impairments and disabilities have, they might be better able to tell us what we should be using it for rather than us kind of finding different ways to, to integrate it. <clears throat> Absolutely, 100%. And that, that's a really good point to make and something that, you know, here at Communicare, we can take on board and equally anyone else listening to this, this short clip today. So, I mean, I just want to, you know, say thank you very much, Julie, for joining me this afternoon. Um, and I look forward to speaking with you again soon, hopefully. Sure. Thanks very much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you.